we didn't have really the, the money to shoot a normal union film at that time in Philadelphia, so we would travel in a van. I would jump out of the van, and uh, we were working with the handheld camera at the time with, with Garrett Brown, and it was uh, ex somewhat experimental. And he'd film me running through shopping malls and up down the steps and flights, uh, I mean, curb corridors along the river until finally my legs basically gave out and I'm like writhing on the ground and I want to <laughs> rise up and say, John, I'm dying here. And he goes, no, no, use it. Use the pain. I said, for what? I mean, I'm in misery. He goes, well, no, no. You know, it, it's giving your character, it's give, it giving him some depth. I said, it's giving me bruises. It's giving me like agony. I can't sleep at night. But, you know, John would use, one thing about John, he would use the environment. If he saw like the scene where we just jumped down and saw this ship along the dock, this uh, uh, docked along the pier. And he said, just jump out, run as fast as you can along the ship. And, and, and I'm running and running. I said, you know what? My legs are buckling. I'm, I'm literally going to crash down here. Teeth are going to go, jaw, face. I'm just going to be ground down to this flat-faced image. Please. And, and I just barely made it. If John had had me. He would have me run and run and jump park benches and down streets and people are throwing things at me like when I had the orange thrown at me and I'm, these people had no idea who I was. I was just some strange alien invader in a well-worn, tattered, baggy, <laughs> incredibly <laughs> ugly sweatsuit running through their neighborhood, you know, and they're like throwing things at me. And we kind of like made it work, but I actually was like, I thought they were trying to hit me with the orange. There was a kind of a, a lot of injuries on the set. I remember I was doing uh, running up and down the steps. Originally, I was supposed to run up and down the steps with Butkus to show how strong Rocky had become the first time. He could barely get up the steps. And then I started picking up the dog. And halfway up the steps, I said, this is a bad idea. The dog weighed about 135 pounds. I said, and there's no way I could run gracefully up the steps, more or less. I couldn't even stagger up the steps. So the dog was definitely cut out. But in the meantime, I had gotten a, a wicked case of shin splints, which is an old injury I had gotten from playing high school football. And then when I was hitting the meat, I thought, oh, this would be an interesting visual, hitting the meat. Well, I don't know if anyone's hit a, a bull lately. They're hard. They're real hard. So all my knuckles are flattened out. They just uh, became, um, I guess, kind of like, um, well, I don't know what they're good for anymore. I guess, you know, kind of like a table leg now. They're, they're pretty flat. They're pretty even. They really don't function as a hand much anymore. But these are all somewhat of the memories of, uh, and, and the broken finger that I was using with Adrian. I said, okay, I'll just like, take all the injuries in the movie and somehow work it in. Also in the movie, there was a, we couldn't afford many people, so I tried to get as much help uh, from from friends, from my brother who plays a street corner singer, and my father who's a bell ringer. I, I said my dog is in it. Even uh, my my wife, my first wife, uh, was the set photographer. But it was she was I think she shot a total of maybe a hundred pictures because the budget was really really tight. And uh, actually, it was probably the best set photographer I've had in a long time because all those pictures are great. Talia Shire was also um, a last-minute choice because we, we just couldn't find the right person. And then she came in, and it was, I think, the same night as Carl Weathers. A very, very, I, I think it was. And she came in, and we just read. And I felt the earth move. I, I really felt a tremendous vitality and kinship. I mean, I loved her. I really, really loved her. I just loved the way she looked and the way she, she her hair fell and, and this timid, fragile creature. I said, just incredible and the perfect voice. So when we were going to do uh, Rocky meets her and he, he, he just talks to her and, and, and he sees a beauty in her that no one else sees because everyone has something to do. Rocky really has nothing to do. So he moves at a much slower pace and he observes and he sees things that other people don't see. So he's trying to bring her out because I guess he feels that she's probably the only one who's worse off than he is. So he's feeling kind of like a little protective towards her. And the sequence where we're supposed to go ice skating, originally that was written for 300 extras and it was a big deal. Well, I show up on the set. They said, we have a slight change in plans. We have one extra. I said, 
interesting. And um, I said, well, I have a, an interesting thing uh, to tell you, too. I don't ice skate. I don't know why I wrote it, but I thought it'd be interesting. So here we are with an empty arena, and uh, I don't really skate at all. So I decided I was going to run on ice, and she really, she says she skates, but if you watch her, her ankles are falling in, and she's barely holding on, and Rocky's trying to explain his life, looking cool, and he looks like so foolish, but she doesn't care, and where they really come together at that moment when he goes, you know, my father said I wasn't born with much of a brain, he goes, uh, my mother, my mother, she says sort of the same thing, he says you weren't born with much of a body, so you better start developing your brain, it's like, Oh, these two people are two halves that absolutely need to fit together. You know, they are really on the same page. Then he walks her home. I think we make a real sharp couple of coconuts. I'm dumb with your shot. What do you think? And I'm starting to, like, realize that this is the key to the film. This is the heartbeat. The whole, the whole movie is going to be based on the discovery of these two people, the love. She goes upstairs. And now she's, like, terrified because this is not exactly what you call a swinging bachelor apartment. And the moment when he, when he gets her to that, that door, all of a sudden the, the whole facade changes. He no longer looks like this terrifying guy. He goes, you know, would you take off your glasses? And she really looks, if you ever watch that scene closely, you'll never see better responding by an actress to an awakening inside of like really feeling like someone truly loves her, that it's like she's dying. She's never felt this before. And coming from this man who is, you know, this physical kind of specimen, the last kind of guy she ever imagined herself being with, it, it just, I mean, I, I disappear in that scene. She is just off the chart. You want to kiss me back if you don't want to? And I knew, I said, as soon as I kiss her, I'm going to be in a hospital bed. But it's okay. I knew I was going to have it. He's like, here comes the flu. And anyway, I come together and I kiss her and we go down to the floor. I, I don't know if, if I could ever have a scene that had more love than I'll ever do in it. And even though I got the cold, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm over it, Talia. It's okay.